I'm really happy to be a part of this band and to be a part of this family. And your drumming fits like a glove. Uh, seems to be so far. Smelly glove. It's like a smelly glove. Yes. <laughs> Where's that glove been? Yes. Mm. Mm. Be wary. <laughs> Are we talking about the shadow again? The smelly thing? Mm. <laughs> well, the trio format is legendary. Well, like the Avengers experience on Cream and uh, Blue Share and later bands like Muse. Mm. Yeah, Police, of course. But, is, what's the thing with that? You have to fill it, fill up a lot. Well, you know, I think we're less politics. Drums, guitar, bass, vocals. Well, I don't know. I mean, we're not really, in essence, a sort of a power trio in, in sort of the, the classic, uh, you know, sort of terms of the word, I suppose, or terms of phrase. No and we haven't really. Solo well, no, that's true. You know, but that was one of the one of the few things that were banned from early on. One. You know. Um, and uh, I mean, since the f I mean, the first album is like that, you know. But I already by the time of the second album, we were finding that kind of power trio, sort of drums, bass, guitar, vocals idea just just very very limiting. You can hear us from album two, sort of trying to stretch our sound more and more, you know. And um, I mean, what happens in the studio is that you know Steve puts puts his drums down, and then Stefan and I put everything else on, you know, <laughs> kind of thing, bass, drums, uh, bass, guitar, piano, keyboards, and any other crazy instruments that we can sort of get our hands on, you know, and whatever we can't do, like strings or, or, or brass, you know, we, we get arrangers in for. But 90% of what, what is done on top of the drums is, is, is myself and Stefan, which basically means that when it comes to playing it live, like at the moment, we need six people on stage to reproduce it. Um, so I think we started off as as a power trio, but already by the, by 1998, around the time of Without You I'm Nothing, our second album, we already found that that format was too limiting for us. Mm. Suppose, you know, we were f far too ambitious at far too young an age, you know? Artistically so, artistically ambitious, and that ambition sort of kind of, I think, remains. Um, and you know, deep in the center and uh, of, of placebo, and it's what, what kind of drives us, I suppose. And uh, it's a it's a it's a never-ending quest for for artistic success and and, and development and, and evolution. Now, I would like to see what you say, but I, I would describe your music a bit like very raw energy, like the punk energy, and the dramatic parts of uh, the glam rock, the, the mm. kind of. Beginning of seventies with Bowie, of course, and we're a big fan of him, Mark Bowler, uh, and uh, and kind of dark lyrics in a way. Yeah, that's that's Lou Reed in there. Yeah, you know, there's the little bit. Yeah, for me, it's it, for me, it's the it's the Holy Trinity. You know, of that period of time is just is is you know is is Bowie, Reed, and and Iggy Pop. You know, kind of thing. They were kind of the the, ex, the really exciting kind of power trio of like, <laughs> of the, you know, the late 70s, early 80s, you know, I suppose. And, and that music is kind of timeless still. You, uh, Transformer is a fantastic album, and uh, of course the Slider with T-Rex is a fantastic album, and all, all the Bowie albums at the time. Is it, what no. is it that makes that timeless, and are you looking for that same kind of... Well, we're looking for a timelessness, yeah. certainly, you certainly. know, but you, you have to remember, I mean, sort of, we were, we were children of the 80s, so we kind of grew up with with disco, uh, primarily as 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 the kind of the, the cultural backdrop, you know, mm -hmm. and um, sort of like the birth of independent music, really. Um, so we kind of grew up with with we we're very lucky, you know. Everybody sort of rails on the '80s as if it was a really terrible decade, but in fact, a lot of people in pop music during the '80s, like Kate Bush and and Bowie, were making really avant-garde records, you know, like. Um, all of Kate Bush's early work and so, so a song like Ashes to Ashes by Bowie is just, it's really, really avant-garde. And you don't get pop music that's avant-garde anymore. What you get is karaoke idol, you know? And uh, you get a co you have a competition on TV which is designed to make money for the record companies and the TV company and the phone company and also to, and what it does is it 
because it's all this karaoke nonsense. It just kind of gives pop a bad name. Mm. And also in the 80s, there's the fantastic birth of kind of the independent record labels. And so, you know, labels like Rough Trade and 4AD, and they had, you know, they had the Smiths, they had, you know, the, the Cure were on fiction records. You know, you had um, the birthday party in Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds and the Cocteau Twins on 4AD. It's just this real kind of explosion of kind of of really, really healthy music, and so we just, you know, we discovered My Bloody Valentine and stuff like that in the 80s, and of course the Pixies and Sonic Youth and all of that. So it's a really, really sort of exciting time for us. So in a way, I think that the, that's really sort of where we kind of come from, is this kind of, the mainstream backdrop is disco, you know, and then, you know, what's really happening in our lives is, you know, is, is the birth of independent music, it's, you know, it's Pesh Mode, it's The Cure, it's you know, it's the Smiths and that kind of stuff. Mm. So I think that, it, realistically speaking, that, they, that that period is probably the period that's the most influential on us so as, a, as a band, you know. Yeah. Music finally, band. Then, where does placebo fit in to today's music scene? Hopefully, nowhere, mm. you know, which is kind of, I think, well, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> 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 Hopefully, Probably hopefully yeah. nowhere, you know. Um, I think that's kind of what we've always done, is that we've always kind of existed to the left of the mainstream, and we've been unaffected, like The Cure and like Depeche Mode have, you know, been completely unaffected by fashion and trends and movements in, in music. You know, we just kind of stuck to our guns and, you know, followed our own singular vision and our own path and uh, have been... We're incredibly out of fashion at times, sometimes a little bit more in fashion, but it doesn't really matter because, you know, we're still making music, our fan base is growing, and people are still coming to the gigs, and we are still sort of, we believe, making music that is, to a certain degree, vital. It certainly is. And thank you, guys, for giving my... Give me one of our best birthdays ever. Oh, happy oh, birthday. birthday! Happy birthday! Yeah. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Thank you.